One, two, one, two. Welcome to another episode of TK's Two Cents. It's Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern time. So that means it's time to take two tweets and riff on them for a few minutes. Let's dive right in. Today, we're going to talk about the truth about leadership and the truth about truth. OK, first number uh, tweet number one. When you get your kicks from being seen as a great and glorious guru, you lead people in a way that makes them more dependent on you. When you get your kicks from helping people wake up to their own power, you lead and you lead people in a way that motivates others to think and create for themselves. All right, so there's a story of this great and powerful wizard who could do anything. He could control the weather. He could make the day night and the night day. He could make a cloud of smoke and a pillar of fire appear just by snapping his fingers. He can take a whole bag of lead and alchemize it into gold. And he would roam the earth talking with ordinary people about how we each have the power to be the magicians of our own lives in our own unique way. He would rant and rave to anyone who would listen about the power and the possibilities of the human imagination. But there was one problem. No one would listen to him. No one believed the guy. They all thought he was a scam artist. He never tried to take money from people. He never tried to manipulate people, but they all thought he was a scam artist for one simple reason. This guy never expressed any interest whatsoever in being a mayor, a senator, a president, and yet he has all this power. So one day someone calls him out. A skeptic, a skeptic says, you know, if you really believe all the things you say you believe about power, then why don't you want to rule the world? You see, all you do is spend your time talking with other people about their power and then using your power on things like, you know, helping old ladies cross the street, helping the sick, helping the poor. Why don't you want to rule the world? And he said, because true power does not express itself in the desire to rule the world. It expresses itself in the desire to see other people rule themselves. And when I heard that, I thought, oh, that's it right there, man. That's the perfect definition of leadership right there. It's not about the title. It's not about the position. It's not about the, the popularity. It's about the passion for freedom that desires other people to level up, to step into their own beauty and brilliance and experience the pleasures and the possibilities of being a fully alive human being that takes ownership of the results they want to create with their lives. My question for you, is what kind of leaders are you following? Are you following the kind of leaders who say, hey, everything's gonna be okay, just put your trust in me? Or are you following the kind of leaders who tell you, I don't know if everything's gonna be okay, but I am convinced that you can make things a little bit better if you're willing to learn something new, if you're willing to challenge yourself in a different way, if you're willing to develop a new skill, if you're willing to push yourself, and I'm willing to help you do that. A true leader isn't about saying, hey, worship me, admire me, look up to me. A true leader is someone who says, you respect me? You, you think that I'm somebody? You think that I know what I'm talking about? Okay, I would love to use that power as an opportunity to tell you to cultivate that attitude towards your own self. Use me and anyone else to learn the things you need to know in order to create the kind of life you wanna have, but develop your ability to think for yourself. If you're following leaders that point you to your own power, that's true leadership. If you're following leaders that are just making you addicted to more and more of them and who tell you that your sense of security and well-being depends on them, well, think twice. And not only think twice about what kind of leaders you're following, but what kind of leader are you striving to be? Are you striving to be the kind of leader who needs to be a celebrity, who needs to be the great and glorious guru? If you are, you know, I understand, we all wanna feel validated for our work. We all wanna feel loved and appreciated. But if you get addicted to that stuff, you're on a very dangerous path. Then you're on a path where people can threaten to take away your celebrity. People can threaten to cancel your entire legacy. But when your legacy is grounded in something more substantial than that, your legacy can't be canceled because you're not in the business to be seen as the perfect, infallible, great and glorious guru. You're simply in the business of pointing other people to the power that they have to do that for themselves. Don't encourage people to depend on you, empower them to become more independent for themselves. Let's go to tweet number two. All right, 
Sometimes the truth hurts, but it also helps. Developing a healthy mindset isn't about forcing yourself to feel positive about things that truly feel terrible. It's about embracing the fact that you that the truth is on your side when you re, when you react and respond in a healthy way. You know, there's this saying, and, and, and people love it, you know, facts don't care about your feelings. Facts don't care about your feelings. And, and people who love to use facts to kind of like uh, slam dunk on you, they love using that one, right? Facts don't care about your feelings. And usually this is accompanied by someone telling you, usually with, with great glee, telling you some truth about yourself that you don't want to hear and you feel all triggered about it. And they're like, ha, 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 facts don't care about your feelings. And I want to give another side to this. I want to give another side to this. You know, is it true that the truth hurts? Yeah, that's true. But you know what else hurts? Growth. You know what else hurts? Progress. Nearly all forms of progress feel like regress in the beginning. Any action step you take in order to grow and get better is going to feel like pain, inconvenience, stress, discomfort in the beginning. You know, if you want to work out, for instance, and you're out of out of shape, well, when you first start working out, your body's going to be like, don't do this to me. It hurts. It's uncomfortable. Even if you like, let's say you have a phone, right? And you and, and you like your phone, but you, you see another phone that's better. It's got more features. It's got more options. It can do more things. And you get that new phone. Well, that's progress, right? But guess what it's going to feel like? It's going to feel like regress. Because now you have to learn how to how to uh, use a new operating system. You've got to learn the placement of the apps and, and and how that how the user interface for that that new piece of technology you have works. And now you make calls at a slower rate. You send text messages at a slower rate, and it's frustrating at first until you get acclimated to this new superior piece of technology. It's like that with anything. It's like that with losing weight. It's like that with getting healthier. It's like that with learning a new skill. It's like that with studying the things that you wanna be informed about. It's like that resolving conflicts and relationships. It's like that building a business, growing your marriage, whatever it is you want to do. Progress initially feels like regress because growth hurts. So when people say the truth hurts, you know, whatever their intentions might be, I just wanna let you know that that's no reason to run from truth because that ain't the whole story. The truth hurts sometimes, but it helps always because to follow truth is to be in agreement with reality. And even when being in agreement with reality feels bad, know that that bad feeling is only temporarily because when you react and when you respond to that truth in a way that says, you know what? There's a way for me to reorganize my life in order to accommodate these facts. And I would be so much worse off if I chose the delusional path of organizing my life in a way that didn't take facts into account. So facts don't care about your feelings, but they are the best friends that you'll ever have. So instead of running away from them, run towards them, knowing that positivity isn't about saying, oh, <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. No, positivity is about saying, it feels terrible. It absolutely stinks. I don't enjoy feeling this way, but you know what? Like all forms of growth, like working out, like eating healthy, like building a business, like building a relationship, this is good for me. It's gonna make me better. And when I get on the other side of this, I will be glad that I ran towards that truth, not away from it. Peace out, everybody. I'll see you next Tuesday, 12 p.m. Eastern time for another edition of TK's Two Cents. Have a great weekend.